us where can you tell us a bit about yourself? Good morning, my name is Miss Natisha Reed. I'm the EOP counselor here at Farmingdale. I've been here for about a year and a half, but I have over 20 years of experience in social work and helping students and other clients and individuals. So maybe you can tell us about how students can be prepared for their student accounts. Okay, so I think the most important thing would be to check your emails often. That's going to be your first line of communication. Um, so if you have an outstanding bill or charges or holds, all of that's going to go to your email. And so usually we'll have information as to where you need to go to follow up or what you need to do to resolve it. And the processing of scholarships, do you know how that shows on student accounts? Yes, so normally on student accounts, you'll see a breakdown of your financial aid and it may say a Pell Grant tab, uh, a scholarship, and the amount that you are awarded. Um, and you can also refer to your student aid report just to compare it to. And payment plans? So um, if you do not have enough financial aid to cover your bill, you can make a payment plan with student accounts where you can agree to pay like four equal payments. So let's say four equal payments of $250 or whatever your bill is. And normally it may be like by the 15th of each month up until the month before the semester ends. If you don't pay it, then you won't be able to register or um, for the next semester, they'll put a hold on your account. They love hold. <laughs> and when submitting documents, how long does a student have to wait to show that it's been submitted? I would say general rule of thumb is three to five business days, but I say allow up to two weeks. Okay, and when a student feels that they don't want to be in a class, how can they change that? So the college itself has deadlines for when you can drop or withdraw from a class. Normally, you can drop a class up until, let's say, two to three weeks after the class starts. After that, it would be like a withdrawal where you would need to get a form signed by your professor and because you're an EOP student, normally us, or at least give us a copy. Okay. And with COVID-19, has there been changes on the payment plan in the past year? Um, not really any changes, I'll say. They did have the um, CARES Act award where students were given um, additional funding for money to help out with expenses and food and so forth just because everyone was having a really hard time and a lot of people lost their jobs. I don't know if the CARES Act will be released again. Okay. And can you tell us about the process of when students register for classes? Yes. So. As freshmen, you were already registered, you kind of didn't have much of a choice, but in the spring semester, you should receive an email um, saying your window to register might be the week of March 13th, I'm just throwing out dates. Um, and so during that period, you would have the chance to meet with your academic advisor. Some of uh, the students might be meeting with Ms. Pettit, some you may have to go to your department and then you would meet with your advisor just to pick out on um, the schedule based on what's required for your degree. Okay. And are there other things that students can ask us to do their own student accounts? There probably are, but um, <laughs> like I said, I'm kind of new, so I don't know all the ins and outs, but um, we have helped to definitely get you through. Ms. Pettit is a good resource, um, and when you meet with your counselor, uh, I'm going to say she because we don't have a male counselor. Um, she would be able to kind of walk you through it together. Okay, and is there anything you can tell us about uh, Degree Works? Degree Works is a very important tool because you're going to see all of the classes that you need for your degree and your progress towards that degree. So, right now, if you looked at Degree Works, it might say 1% complete. Um, and then as you move on, it'll go up to 50%, 90%, and that's kind of how you will know if you're on target to graduate. And it'll break down like what your general ed requirements are, what your major requirements are, and how much you've completed of each. That's all the questions we Thank you. Please tell me about yourself.
imagination. Did you have any difficulties on Oasis? Um, I would say like one of the first difficulties I had when navigating Oasis is my school schedule. Um, so how I found that out was going through like registration and it says class by class, week by week. So that really helped me a lot to like organize my classes and like what places to go, where the classes were and etc. Um, my biggest difficulty on, on Oasis was picking my classes and like signing up for them. So I talked to my advisor and she took me step by step, by step through the process of picking classes. So it made it easier for me to go on forward um, picking classes. How was the process for financial aid? So financial aid, it was a, it was pretty tricky as well, but it was very helpful to see what aid I got and the loans I was given. Um, a high, like, I mean, an advice I would give is to like go to your financial aid and like go to your award section and accept the award because sometimes a lot of students don't realize that um, they have the award but like don't really accept it. So I highly recommend checking area of Oasis. Um, after I finished filling out FAFSA, which was pretty intimidating, but you know, I had my parents and other people who helped me fill that out, um, your information automatically comes to Farmingdale State College, and when you go to the financial aid section, you can see the awards that you're given, and also you can accept or decline them, so you have to make sure you accept them if you are uh, received any.